Welcome to part three, where we continue with connectivity in the central office, but focus on the optical distribution frames and how to manage cables and patch cords efficiently. When designing an ODF system, it should be able to accept either interconnect or cross-connect architectures within the same system. This flexibility allows a network that starts out using interconnect to migrate to cross-connect when and if it is needed, without having to replace existing equipment. The ease with which the equipment can be redeployed and installed into the network depends largely on the ODF. In a full cross-connect ODF in which the FOT equipment has a dedicated location in a termination panel, the existing equipment can be easily redeployed to a different OSP fiber via the cross-connect patch cord. The accessibility of this patch cord directly affects the cost of this network reconfiguration. So it should be capable of being easily removed for rerouting, including the excess stored slack, without causing additional attenuation on any installed active fiber. The splicing of outside plant or OSP fibers to connectorized pigtails to allow termination panel access to the OSP fiber can be done in two basic configurations, on-frame and off-frame. On-frame splicing is performed within the confines of the optical distribution frame, ODF, whereas off-frame splicing is done away from the ODF, generally in or near the OSP cable vault. Original fiber networks incorporated on-frame splicing since the fiber counts were very small. But even today, on-frame splicing can be a cost-effective solution for small and medium fiber count, less than 432 fibers networks, where future growth is limited. One of the drawbacks is that the total number of terminations in a single rack is reduced by the presence of the splice panels, so generally there are fewer than 432 terminations in a single frame. Another drawback is access to the ODF, as different organizational groups are usually responsible for splicing functions and cable installation. Having splicing on the fiber frame limits the functions that can physically be performed on the fiber network at the same time. This conflict can result in delays in service turnup, as well as possible scheduling conflicts over the ODF access, resulting in an increase in the installation costs and probability of failure in the network. For larger OSP fiber counts, off-frame splicing is ideal as this is done by splicing the OSP fibers to pigtails in a location away from the ODF such as the cable vault in a large capacity splice frame or wall mount cabinet. Splice cabinets that are able to handle 864 splices are common. The link between the splice closure and the ODF is made via an intra-facility cable IFC that is connectorized on one end ready to be loaded into the termination panel. This can be done in the field, although experience has shown that factory loading reduces the overall cost of installation, including training costs. Termination panels with IFC assemblies are generally configured in 72 or 96 fiber counts. Another advantage of off-frame splicing is that routing OSP cables through an office can be more difficult than routing IFC intra-facility cables as they have a thicker, more rigid jacket. OSP cables may also have metallic strength members that require special grounding not normally used on ODFs. In any case, the OSP cable's stiffness can make it very difficult to route through a central office or head end. IFC cables jacketing, on the other hand, is more flexible, but still rugged enough to be routed through an office without any additional protection. Whatever splicing system is chosen, the decision needs to be based on long-term network requirements. A network in which on-frame splicing works well initially may require off-frame splicing in the future, so the ODF system should have the flexibility to easily incorporate either. The operational impact of using the wrong splicing system can include running out of floor space, increasing network installation time and cost, and reducing long-term reliability. The decision between 19-inch or 23-inch racks, Etsy racks or cabinets, as well as between front and rear ODF access or only front access, has implications for the operation and reliability of the ODF system. 
As a rule, the larger the rack and the greater the access, the better the cable management will be. An ODF in a 19-inch enclosed cabinet with no rear access will have far less accessibility and fiber cable management features than an ODF in a 23-inch open rack with front and rear access. This limited access space and lack of cable management features will have a direct impact on the flexibility and reconfigurability of the fiber network, as well as the network's long-term reliability. Even though floor space requirements and existing practices may indicate a particular type of rack configuration, attention needs to be paid to the overall effect on fiber cable management. As the fibers are routed from the ODF to the FOT equipment, they need to be protected in order to provide proper protection and ensure future growth and reconfiguration capabilities, they should be placed in a dedicated cable raceway system. This system is generally located at the lower level of the auxiliary framing or ladder racking structure to make access for installing and routing fibers easier. As the system is in an area of the office in which technician activities are common, the cable raceway system needs to be durable and robust enough to handle day-to-day -day activities such as a technician accidentally putting his weight on it. The integrity of all the fibers in the system is in jeopardy. A durable, properly configured raceway system with suitable cable management, especially bend radius protection, makes network installation and reconfiguration faster and more uniform. Cable congestion is just like traffic congestion. Put too many cars at one time onto a small road and you have traffic problems with it becoming difficult to move from one point to another, and the probability of having an accident increases. The same basic rules apply to fiber congestion in an ODF's raceway system. So too many fibers routed into a single trough makes accessing any individual fiber very difficult, and the probability of damaging a fiber increases. This can lead to decreased network reliability and an increase in the time it takes to reconfigure the network. Telcordia recommends that the fiber cable in any given horizontal raceway should not exceed 50 millimeters or 2 inches in depth. There are also formulas that can be used to calculate the maximum number of fibers that can be safely installed in a given cable trough. For a 3 millimeter fiber cable, for example, the formula shows that you can get 44 fibers per 25 square millimeters or 1 square inch of raceway space or about seven fibers per square centimeter of raceway space. Thus, a cable raceway that is 127 millimeters wide can accommodate up to 440 three millimeter jacketed fiber cables. Following these rules ensures that the fiber cables are always accessible and helps maintain the network's long-term reliability. As competition intensifies in telecommunications markets, low cost, High bandwidth, flexibility, and reliability will be the hallmarks of successful service providers. Fiber is the obvious medium for networks with these characteristics. But providers will miss many of fiber's benefits unless they get the cable management right. Going with the cheapest approaches for fiber cable management can be penny-wise and pound-foolish. It can mean dramatically higher long-term costs and lower reliability. On the other hand, strong fiber cable management systems with proper bend radius protection, well-defined cable routing paths, easy fiber access, and physical protection will enable providers to reap the full benefits of fiber and operate a highly profitable network. Comscope's end-to-end -end support for fiber to the premise at the head end or central office includes fiber entrance cabinets, fiber distribution frames, video WDMs for any PON video overlay solutions, the fiber guide raceway systems, broadcast video connectivity systems, and fiber patch panels and fiber patch cords for interconnect and cross-connect between equipment and applications. The ODF system put into an office should be capable of handling the future requirements of the network as necessary, allowing new services to be implemented quickly and cost-effectively. These requirements include the addition of more fibers as well as new products such as splitters, WDMs, optical switches, and the like.
The addition of any new panels, whether for splicing, termination, storage, or other functions, should not cause any interference with or movement of the installed fibers, as this ensures that network reliability is maintained. Comscope has high-density ODFs to accommodate high numbers of terminations in a small area, and while high termination density requires less floor space, strong consideration needs to be given to the overall cost of this solution. A higher density ODF does not necessarily correspond to a higher fiber count potential in the office, as the focus needs to be on having a system with strong cable management features that is flexible enough to accommodate future growth, while allowing for easy access to the installed fiber network. Any quality ODF solution should always consist of six fundamental building blocks. If one of them is absent or incomplete, the customer will struggle to find a good solution. The six blocks are 1. A specific frame solution to house connectivity blocks and offer superior cable and patch cord management. 2. A housing to facilitate the connectivity adapters. Note the housing is referred in several terminologies, shelf, panel, block, chassis sub rack. 3. Adapters or adapter packs. 4. Design, component and building blocks to enable prefibered solutions. Easy to build in the factory but also easily packed, shipped, unpacked and installed on site. 5. Value added modules fitting in the same footprint as the adapters to support filters, splitters, monitoring devices and so on. 6. And lastly, on-frame splicing solutions, as not all customers do off-frame splicing. The Comscope NGF is a frame with integrated spools enabling any-to-any -any connection within the frame with one single patch cord length, which is 6 meters. For connections to any additional frame, you just add 1 meter, 7 for next, 8 for the second next, and so on. The NGF frame has an integrated trough system requiring access to the back, therefore frames cannot be placed back to back. NGF blocks exist in three variants. 1. Adapter only. This is not recommended due to difficult to fiber up in the field. 2. MPO on the back. 192 and 288 version have improved MPO access pointing to the back into the troughs instead of up. 3 pre-cabled with a stub of 10 to 40 meters. VAM modules, either splitters or WDM versions, are available designed to fit in the same footprint as the sliding adapter pack. On-frame splicing solutions are available with combination block. However, this means significant reduction of the frame density. Documentation for this is available in the lesson download area. Similar to NGF, the NG4 frame has a specific frame with integrated spool system enabling any-to-any -any connection within the frame with one single patch cord length of 6 meters. The spool diameter is smaller than the NGF and therefore NG4 works with G657A2 fiber only 15 millimeter bend radius. The NG4 has no blocks but a chassis with the following benefits. One. It has a blade system allowing to integrate several types of connectivity from adapter packs to MPO or LC modules and VAMs. 2. A high level of modularity allowing the customer to build as they grow, giving a much higher level of modularity versus the NGF frame. 3. Lastly, it has an identical back and front access with sliding blades. NG4 has on-frame splicing solutions in the form of a drawer at the bottom, enabling full patch capacity to be maintained. In combination with the CMODs, cabled modules, a very flexible solution can be created. Feeder cables arrive at the bottom from which 12, 24, or even breakouts to CMODs can be spliced on and simply snapped into the NG4 chassis blade. Documentation for this is available in the lesson download area. The FACT optical distribution frame system is designed as a set of modules to fit into existing FIST GR3 racks, allowing simple access and an easy migration path towards new connectivity platforms and expansion of existing central office sites. 
Fact modules support full patch and or splice patch functions within a rack environment. The trays within the element can be configured with adapters, splicing or passive optical components and are staggered for easy fiber routing and access to the connectors. One fact element houses 24 SC or duplex LC connections and can be built up in modules to meet the customer's requirements. The maximum number of elements pre-clicked together is 8 pieces to accommodate a total of 192 SCs. The splicing solution comes in two forms. The FACT GPS splice patches in one panel, therefore has no density reduction. Or the FACT GSS full splice that supports single circuit splicing but reduces the ODF patch density. That completes this webinar. Thank you.